I never really enjoyed the Splinter Cell games. I remember getting the first one with my original Xbox, and the punishingly strict stealth action quickly infuriated me as I consistently came up short of the perfection it demanded. The franchise has slowly become more forgiving, however, and now Splinter Cell Blacklist gives plenty of choice of how to move through its diverse range of maps and encounters. The automatic failures that dog me at every turn in the earlier games is now mostly gone, with Blacklist providing me with multiple ways to approach each mission, all of which make me feel like a badass. Terrorism is an easy villain in today's climate, but Blacklist hasn't simply played on prejudice. Instead, the team at Ubisoft has created a diverse enemy group with an agenda murky enough and a plan interesting enough to keep you guessing until the end. The group, calling themselves simply the Engineers, has laid out a timetable of attacks against America unless the US government agrees to call home all of their troops on foreign soil. With the countdown already ticking towards attack number two, it's up to Splinter Cell veteran Sam Fisher and his unit, 4th Echelon, to stop them. With a unit made up of the best mind in their disciplines, all that is left is to get them out in the field, which is achieved in an impressive style by the Paladin. This massive aircraft is equipped with all the team needs as they try to stop each of the attacks and hunt down the terrorist leader in the most covert of black ops. It is a well-constructed story, with a premise that allows the action to move between a broad range of settings and gameplay styles as the momentum continues to build. As I said at the start, Blacklist allows you to approach most areas in a number of ways. Stealth is still a clear focus, with Sam as nimble and silent as ever, but if you choose, it's just as possible to th roll through most of the game as though it were a cover-based shooter. Blacklist itself distinguishes three different approaches to play. Ghost, moving unseen through the world. Panther, no one sees you until it's too late. And Assault, which is when you think you're playing Gears of War. At the end of a mission, scores are awarded depending on how Sam conducted himself, with a bonus given if you break certain thresholds in each, encouraging multiple playthroughs. However you choose to approach the game, the controls feel good, with Sam more than capable in every role providing he is prepared. And that is where the upgrades come in. There are a full complement of gadgets and weapons on hand in-game, allowing specialisation towards each different approach. Ever more silent suits, scanner upgrades and EMP grenades help the ghostly player, while a tri-rotor drone is one of the best tools available to Panthers. Finally, assault specialists can shun stealth in favour of armour and weapon upgrades for maximum lethality. Despite all of these different approaches, Blacklist still forces changes in pace with different objective types, drone missions and even first person shooter stages. All of this keeps the game feeling fresh, even if, like me, you're driving yourself unnecessarily crazy trying to be stealthy when it isn't really a requirement anymore. Blacklist offers a range of multiplayer options, some of which have their hooks woven into the main campaign. Each of the E4 missions, which are given to Sam from his intelligence team as part of the main story, are all playable through online or split-screen co-op. These missions fall into different types, each promoting different playstyles, so if you choose to go in with a partner, it's good to know they share your goal, especially if you're trying to be stealthy and they start a firefight, inviting a new wave of enemy reinforcements. Of the four sets of E4 missions, only one is required co-op, with the others all offering the chance to go in solo. But a partner can always be helpful, especially as some paths are only accessible with the help of a friend. The other main multiplayer option is the Spy vs Mercs competitive mode. This pitches two teams of up to four players aside against each other with opposing, asymmetric objectives. For example, this may see spies having to hack a set of computers while the Mercs must defend them. Spies play the game as Sam Fisher would, staying in the shadows and hard to see, but they have a reduced loadout compared to Sam with a focus on staying hidden. Mercs, on the other hand, play the game like a first-person shooter, hunting down the spies, but limited by a narrow field of vision and slower movement. Every multiplayer mode offers new twists on Blacklist's core mechanic, and will keep me involved for some time to come, even if it is just playing through some of the missions I only previously tackled solo. With the HD texture pack installed, the range of shadow-drenched environments that filled the world of Blacklist look fantastic. Staying in shadows before dashing out to vault over the scenery sees everything moving smoothly, while the HUD elements and indicators throughout the world ensure you always know what is required without skipping back to a menu. 
the voice cast, while not very familiar through their gaming back catalogue, all do fantastic work of delivering the story framework they're given, even managing to interject personality of their archetypal characters. Sound effects also added to the tone, with gunfire echoes and incidental dialogue all creating a sense of place. Unfortunately, these did fail during a few cutscenes, when the audio seemed to drop out for me, leaving some dramatic gunfire moments lacking in impact. Not having been a huge fan of the original Splinter Cells, I was stunned at how much Blacklist drew me in. With a broad range of playstyles, beautiful look and smooth controls, the game has moved from a niche genre title to the mainstream. Normally diluting a core experience isn't something I would encourage, but here it has been done with such skill, while still allowing fans to play it as a punishing stealth game if they so desire, that it's hard not to approve. Remember to subscribe below for more reviews, and visit playlevel.com for all of your gaming news.